Hey, welcome guys to another live stream on this Sunday, the 6th of uh, November. Oh, December. Yes, it's December. <laughs> right, okay. So as usual, we have the uh, agenda. So let's bring up the agenda and have a look what's happening. Okay, so as usual, we do the uh, news and updates on our FunKit website and also AMD3D. And then we'll bring on special guest Dennis Garcia from uh, Hardware Asylum. Uh, you'll probably know him from uh, Ninja Lane as well. And then we'll do the Rig Builder, our system configurator, and it's basically our little tool for you guys to use to get some kind of prices and also kind of a spec on building a PC. And then, of course, we got the mods of the week. And that's taken from our Extreme PC modding group on our Facebook page. So check it out. We have uh, almost 50,000, or more than actually, 50,000 members. So thanks, guys, for joining and becoming a member. It's a place to post your mods. Uh, and if you have any ideas, then you can actually go there and get some great modding tips. And then uh, we'll do the uh, break. We'll have a couple of minutes break. And then, of course, we'll go back to the uh, general tech chat and we'll talk about the GeForce, uh, yes, RTX, a 3080 Ti, is that a rumor? Who knows? But yeah, we'll talk about that uh, with uh, Dennis and of course some general uh, tips on modding and usual stuff like that. And yes, of course, we've got some pri live prize giveaways of, yes, and uh, our prize um, giveaways on our website. We've got a, a load of prize giveaways. We want to check out some of the stuff on the website. <clears throat> and then um, after that, then we'll do a, a, a uh, next week's preview. All right, so uh, let's have a look at the website. Let's bring up the website. As usual, we have the um, Funky Kit website. So let's bring that. Hey, let's have a little chat. We got Bob. Hey, Bob, how's it going? Bob's from uh, <laughs> thinkcomputers.org. So, oh yeah, no Superman t-shirt. Yeah, it's just a regular boring Nike one. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the gym later. So <laughs> we got Arvin. How's it going? Right. Okay. Great. Uh, website, yes, Funky Kit, and uh, let's have a look at the reviews that we've done in the past last week. So, um, this is the one we got the uh, Katana, yes, the Katana 7 series DDR4 3616 kit. So, this is pretty cool. This is from Antec. And um, if you notice here, look, it's got like a some metallic little strip here that looks metallic, but when you put it on. And you switch on the RGB that glows up with all the colors. That's really nice. I like that. Uh, check out the Rivet website. There's also a video as well on that. See what I mean with the RGB going on here. Very nice. Um, very sleek looking. I do like them. And it has this kind of a premium feel to it. And uh, we'll be using one of these to build our next project. So uh, yeah, check out the review on that and also the video. Uh, prices $120. Not too bad. Get that from Amazon as well. All right. Let's go back to see what other reviews we have. We've got this um, Antec Neptune 240. So this one is pretty cool. It's an uh, all-in-one cooler with RGB, ARGB. And this one's interesting because it has a, um, a pump in the radiator. So let me bring up the sh screenshot. Here we go. So this here is a pump inside the top of the radiator. And so it eliminates the uh, weight of the... Um, the part the head the you know the the copper uh, CPU water block so if you look at that it's quite slim because the pump is actually moved from there to the top of the radiator and all you have a one cable and that's the RGB and that's it um, so yeah I, I quite like this and um, you check out the video as well we mounted this onto our Intel processor and actually cooled it quite well uh, prices have a look you get this in Amazon for around about 109 degree uh, 109 dollars not too bad I was it 109 degrees then? <laughs> $109, dollars yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. Moving on, uh, other reviews. We have um, this one. This is pretty cool. This was done by Chris. Uh, this is a Porsche design, a 27 inch um, monitor, gaming monitor. And this one has got some crazy specs. 240 hertz refresh rate and 0.5 millisecond response time. Amazing. It's a 1440p, uh, so it's uh, 2K, and um, yeah, it's amazing. This one ain't cheap. It's around about $800, but the design of this, look, look at that. It looks so cool. Uh, AOC, Argon, yeah, or Aegon, but yeah, very nice. I like this. So yeah, check out the review uh, on our website. And then <clears throat> this one's a Ballistic, 128 gig, and... Um, it's a DR4 3600 and it's a ballistic uh, RAM and basically four sticks of uh, 
32? Yeah. <laughs> Just took my maths in. Yeah, 46 or 32 gigs modules. And um, yeah, because it's 128 gig, it ain't going to be cheap. So, but they do look nice. These are the ballistic um, um, RGB. Yeah, from Crucial. And um, well, $360. <laughs> Not cheap, but hey, you get 128 gig uh, DDR4 3600. Very nice. And then finally, we've got this one uh, just released this morning or this evening, and that is the ASRock X570 PG Veloster motherboard uh, with a review, and that's actually over at uh, AMD 3D site. I'll, I'll talk about that in a sec, now sister website. So those are the reviews on our website for Funky Kit. Check it out, lots of news, reviews, and tips. Um, yeah, head over there. And let's talk about AMD 3D. So this is our sister site. Uh, it's been happening for about a year now. We had this domain name for a while back, but we've decided to bring it back up since AMD has been quite uh, dominant over the last uh, six months. So yeah, uh, we got the ASRock X570 PG Veloster. That's the new motherboard from uh, ASRock. And um, very nice motherboard. Uh, wouldn't believe the price. It's an enthusiast grade motherboard with lots of RGB, lots of like uh, power phases, supports lots of, you know, high speeds RAM. 5000 series uh, processors, uh, uh, Ryzen, and um, tons of tons of features, PCI 4 support, amazing uh, motherboard. Check out the review and also the website. The price is under 300 in fact, it's only $275. Not bad, huh? But yeah, you get all these features. Look at that, the on-off buttons. I love these on a motherboard. Diagnostic LEDs, yeah, that's right. 2.5 gigabit LAN. PCI4 support, two M.2 PCI4 support uh, SSDs as well, and DDR4 RAM support up to 5,000. Yes, so very nice. Supports the um, Ryzen 5, uh, sorry, Ryzen 5000 series. Yes, processors. Uh, we got Edwin. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Asrock motherboards. Uh, oh, we got Avrin says Asrock motherboards are the best bang for your buck. Yeah, yeah, it is. I like I like uh, Asrock motherboards. All right, so yeah, so this is on the AMD 3D website. We also have some of the news. Uh, we got the Radeon uh, RX 9000 XT 6900. Sorry, RX 6900 XT graphics card. It's got some benchmarks, leaked benchmarks, and then AMD CEO Dr. Lisa Su is doing a uh, presentation at CS 2021. It's like a virtual. Well, of course, nobody's be able to go there now. Um, Power Colors just announced their 6800 series, the um, fighter graphics card. And then we got other gaming news as well. So anything to do with AMD, whether it's AMD a processor, Threadripper, Radeon, Xbox, PS5, anything to do with AMD, check out amd3d.com, our sister site. So those are the sister uh, websites we covered now. And uh, let's move back to our main agenda and let's bring special guest Dennis uh, Garcia from Hardware Asylum. Um, hi Dennis, how's it going? Um, tell us who you are, what you're from and what you do and so on and uh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so so this Ninja Lane is um, uh, started off as a because you had a, a second hobby, right? And that's the motorbikes. Like, is that yeah? Tell us, tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> oh man, Windows ninety five. Hmm. Mm hmm Oh, one second, one sec, one second, one second. 
Um, we got a, a, a eh, the audio is missing. Ah, here we go. Sorry, oh, guys. No. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. So uh, yeah, here we go. We're back, we're back again. So uh, Dennis. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Can you can you hear me now? now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dennis. So Dennis. Um, so we got Dennis from um, Hardware Asylum. So Dennis, uh, tell us who you are, where you're from, what we do, and uh, uh, we're starting back again. So here we go. Take care. Oh. <laughs> so that that was we lost all my audio then. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm I'm Dennis Garcia from HardwareSilum.com, and as I had mentioned before, as Winston had mentioned, I'm also the owner of NinjaLane.com, and that was a website that started me off into the hardware asylum or hardware review world, <laughs> hardware asylum. And um, in 2012, I changed it so I could create a new logo. I'll show you this again, mm -hmm. and I call him the the Flame Guy. And uh, yeah, so the the name Ninja Lane, as I was mentioning earlier, that came from me renaming the network neighborhood icon on Windows 95. And little did you know, you could actually rename the, the names of those icons and, and whatnot. So I named it after Ninja, which was my ZX7 Ninja. I had a 92. Actually, I still have it. And I figured, well, network neighborhood, so how could I put Ninja with a neighborhood theme and that was lane as in a road and uh, of course then once i graduated college and started getting into web design and web development i needed a place to showcase some of my work so i bought ninjalane.com based off of that name and started building um you know the website that would eventually allow me to do product reviews and it started out as a modding site so i did computer case mods and this was back when Mm. The, we had the beige box that might have one fan and it was mostly covered. It just kind of had a couple of holes in the case, right? So you take a Dremel and you cut it out and you put your fan back in there with a wire fan grill and increase <laughs> yeah. airflow by 120%, right? That's right. That's right. As the way to actually extra cooling and stuff like that is the way where, you know, we get the, the ordinary beige box drill a hole in it, put a fan and put some fan grill, make it look nicer. And then we move on from the fans by adding more like, you know, like lights and cold cathode tubes and things like that, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, cold cathode tubes. Um, LEDs were not really a thing, but you could buy an LED fan that had four LEDs around <laughs> around the outside ring. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. you could get ones around the middle. And, and then of course, for eight years after that, LEDs kind of died and then, um, you know, mm. What was it? MSI brought it back with the godlike motherboard at Computex. Was it four years ago or five years ago? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah. That's the but, first motherboard with LED lights that were RGB. RGB. I mean, you had, yeah, RGB LEDs. Because you had LED lights. Um, what was it? A bit started doing those a long time ago. And um, DFI's thing was the, the, uh, the UV mm. expansion sockets. Um, everybody had a gimmick. Yeah. And, MSI was the first one to do an, an RGB lighting scheme that would change the color of the board. Ooh, cool. Hey, listen, um, how about the, uh, when well, you mentioned about Ninja Lane, and so you moved on from that to your current site, which is the Hardware Cyber. How, how long have you been running that? And uh, uh, what, what were you going to take that for the next, uh, say, couple of years? So with the uh, Hardware Asylum? <laughs> well, let's see. I've been doing Hardware Asylum since 2012, 2013, something like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know when I would stop doing hardware assignment. I really kind of like it. And it's, um, you know, I've been doing hardware reviews since, what was it? September, 1999. <laughs> That's Again, long, myself it's almost like it. 20 years, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it is 20 years. Yeah. And, um, you know, those first few years were really tough because everybody was kind of fighting for, well, what is a hardware review? Mm. And, um, you know, written sites back then, this was before YouTube and, you know, we had one site that would do videos, the Kickass Review, right? You remember that guy? Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, they they also had this one called uh, um, I think it was called AGN. It's called Old Games uh, Network. Oh yeah, that was. They that was were they of... were the first ones that I um that I got into the video review. So so I thought, wow. Because back then you had dial-ups and broadband was just starting to kick in. And then I was working for NTL. This is like a cable company. And yeah. um, and I watched this All Games Network. I thought, okay, gaming and stuff like that. And then they did a kind of live unboxing, kind of review, whatever, on a, a, a GeForce TNT. And I thought, whoa, like I'm watching this video and there's some guys using this 
graphics card. I thought, wow, this is this is what I want to do. And then I mm-hmm. was like back in, like I said, 1999, 2000, 2000, around there. And, um, and that's really when I thought, okay, this is something I, I, I want to do. It's, it's my interest. I bought, like I said, I've been in the computer since the Commodore 64 days. That tells you how old I am. <laughs> yeah, so was, yeah, uh, carry on. Well, yeah, and I was Tandy 1000, so there you go. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, written sites back then were, you know, everybody needed to create a gimmick for themselves. And um, mm. you could brand on anything. So I was like, well, Ninja Lane, that seemed to be catchy enough that people would remember. And believe it or not, I still get invoices to be addressed to Mr. Ninja Lane, which I thought was actually kind of cool, even <laughs> though I've been doing hardware asylum ever since then. So, um, yeah, but yeah, it was, um, you know, cool. I, I do on the website product reviews. I could try to focus on high end enthusiast level hardware. So, uh, like the Kingpin video cards of the world and the high end overclocking motherboards, the Asus, formulas and asus uh, maximus extremes Mm. rampage extremes you know that sort of gear um and because i focus on the high-end enthusiast level hardware i don't get to review some of the lower end stuff as much and they don't have as much volume as a result so i try to go and put as much as i can into those reviews um Mm. You know, by overclocking. So that's the other thing I do is I do a bit of overclocking. I, I have a single stage phase cooler in the hardware asylum labs, which is my garage, um, where I can push processors to a certain degree of making them cold and run them for as long as I want. Whereas with liquid nitrogen, you might get an hour, maybe two hours worth of actual use out of the machine before you have to tear it down and mop up yeah, all the condensation true. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, with the phase cooler, you can run it for days and weeks. And I've I've run eight hour benchmarks off of that. You know, I go and start it, go have dinner, have a couple of drinks, come back. <laughs> hey, it's not quite done. Go and watch a movie, come back. Hey, it's done. Awesome. All right. So, so so for all you guys, all you viewers out there, a phase change cooler basically is like a refrigerator, right? It, it, it's just basically um, back in the day, I think uh, one of my friends had one. It was, it's a big unit. Uh, I would say big units are like almost a little box. You get bigger ones, but uh, the ones that I've seen were kind of like hooked on and they had like this huge tube which goes onto like a water, uh, a, a CPU block with copper base and stuff like that. And basically, it just it's like a, a refrigerator. And you can actually get like all sub zero temperatures on that. And um, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't see so many of them around because they're quite expensive, right? Yeah, they are. Yeah. And all of the, I mean, there was, uh, what was it? It wasn't cool. It uh, was, um, it was some, well, it was a company in Taiwan. They actually commercially made phase change machines and they would sell them in various retailers, but they were $1,200 a piece. They yeah, were pretty expensive. expensive. The one I have is a custom unit that a local <laughs> guy in, in the United States, which, you know, as you know, United, the U S is pretty big. So it's all over the place. Uh, he was down in Georgia. He built me a, a bench machine that would handle a 300 watt load. And it will get down to negative 35C. It'll peak at negative 45C. So mm. if there's not a lot of load on the machine, it will get down to that cold. But um, for the most part, processors, if you um, get them down to the negative 30C range, you can overclock them about 10 to 20% more than you would under air. Yeah. And then after that, you really need to go and make the big leap to drop down to negative 100C under liquid nitrogen or yeah so so tell me with even with like minus uh 30 40 you're gonna get condensation how how do you actually kind of cope cope with that condensation would you just like get a hairdryer (laughs) you get some (laughs) towels mop it up what what happens there the um the treatment of the of the product or the component sorry not product is the same as if you were doing liquid nitrogen so i have uh, my choice is needed eraser so it's that art gum eraser you can squeeze it and mold it and whatnot well you can put that on the board and that creates a, a barrier between the circuits and what water might come off of the face head and then before i put the phase on there i put down some blue shop towels some paper towels basically mm. um the the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that with a phase and even liquid nitrogen you'll create ice and condensation but that necessarily isn't dangerous when it becomes dangerous is when it melts 
And that's when you get water and water will flow around and pick up dirt. And then that's where you get electrical shorts and whatnot. But as long as it's frozen, there really isn't a problem. All right. So keep it so, frozen. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you basically keep it frozen. And under some benchmarks, I mean, I will run uh, like a Comet Lake, for instance, I could run that, the one I have at 5.5 gigahertz under the phase. And mm -hmm. if I run any benchmark except for like Cinebench R20, it will stay below zero. Now, if I run Cinebench, it will go above zero, about 20 degrees above zero before the benchmark finishes. Yeah. And at that point, it will start to melt the ice. Mm. So you need to actually kind of watch that. We, we, um, we've seen a lot of, um, especially now with uh, Cooler Master and also um, I think EK is doing one now, the uh, TEC coolers, the, the thermal electric coolers. So uh, mm -hmm. I've, I've actually played with them before and uh, it's too much hassle because you, you've got to have like a nice big power supply to feed the uh, TEC, right? And uh, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a bit too much hassle, but now they're bringing like coolers with built-in TEC. So what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts? I I kind of like the idea. It's um it's a very niche cooling option though. So you have you know. It, you can I explain how TEC works, right? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So the TEC is it's uh, called a thermal electric cooler. So there's uh, an electrical current that goes through a silicon or ceramic base, and one side of it gets cold, and the other side of it gets hot. And what you do is you're offsetting the temperature. So you. In the CPU world, you'll have the cold side on the CPU side or the cold side of the TEC on the CPU. Yeah. And then you'll have a water block on the hot side. So you're just basically using the water block to cool the TEC while it's cooling the CPU. Right. Um, but instead uh, of it just having a, a copper plate between there and trying to transfer the heat, you are. Um, yeah. But you also, adjust. you need to feed the TEC with power. And that yeah. takes a lot of power, right? Yeah, it does. Uh, back in the back in the day, you know, because this isn't a new concept. People used TECs on CPUs and memory before, and even uh, Corsair released a TEC water cooler for their Dominator memory back in the day. Um, but you still, you know, back then you would have a 500 watt power supply that would run your Pentium Four. And then you would have another 500 watt power supply just to just power the to, TEC. Uh, just to power the TEC. Nuts. Yeah, just to power that. And then you would be able to get it down to about negative 20 degrees if you had a properly sized TEC and a good power supply. Oh, well, nuts. the um, the Intel one that came out, and we have uh, EK and Cooler Master are the two that I know of that have yeah. a TEC cooler. They work the same way. So you have a cold plate, the TEC, and then a piece that mounts to the CPU. So they would have a separate power cable coming from the, the I guess the water block, right? Which is the, where the mm -hmm. TEC is located. And that is probably another, maybe a, what was it? A, a Molex connector or something yeah, like I that? Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a Molex or a SATA connector. Yeah, and then you need a, a separate power supply for that or do you, you could plug it straight into that? <laughs> so, well, <laughs> the, the, um, the units from Cooler Master and EK, they use the Intel um, controller mm. that sits on top that's that big block that sits uh, on yeah there. yeah inside there there's a a um, what am i thinking a condensation meter so it'll oh. look at the ambient temperature to see what the dew point would be and it only feeds power to the tec when it will be above that dew point and that dew point is when it starts to collect water and condensation so the um, and the idea is that it will adjust itself based off of the load of the machine and you know that the ambient temperature in your room so that way you just basically um you get a little bit better cooling but it's not like what we would normally do where we feed as much power as we can into the tc to try to get it below zero this is yeah. more of a we're just trying to get it close to as close we can to zero to, ah right so you're never going to gonna get minus where you get a, a, a really risk a high risk of condensation is so going to get it down just above zero which is good enough for most uh cpu yeah. power right okay yeah, cool and, and, well and the idea is so that you keep your cpu on boost yeah you know, yeah we're not talking about turbo cars or anything like that but you just try to keep it on boost so it runs as fast as possible uh, on boost on gets... all four on all cores right yeah, yeah. <laughs> on all, cores. all right cool all right, so that's pretty much uh, a lot of the stuff that uh, Dan has been up to, overclocking, a bit of modding, reviewing, and of course, check out his website at hardwareasylum.com. Um, all and, right, let's... And let's... My, 
Go on. Podcast. On his podcast, yeah. Is that uh, on all of your channels or is that on YouTube? Where was it, it going to be? You can find it on hardwarecyan.com. There is a link at the top for the podcast. Mm-hmm. And you can also find it on all of the podcast networks, including uh, Google and iTunes. All right, nice. All right, okay, let's have a look at the, the system configurator, our rig builder. So let me bring up the website. Here we go. And uh, it's also available on AMD 3D. You can see that on the top left here. And also at the funky kit let's try the funky kit here rig builder this is our system configurator where you can actually go in uh, put in input your criteria whether it's a workstation or gaming set your budget and and basically select a cpu amd or intel or graphics card amd or uh, nvidia or amd all right so and uh then let's pick a um processor <laughs> intel or amd <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an Intel guy, so we're going to All right, go for Intel. Okay, graphics card, NVIDIA or AMD? <laughs> uh, we'll go AMD this time. All right, okay. So we selected gaming, budget of 1600. We selected Intel processor and AMD for the graphics card. So hit the submit button. And what will happen is it'll go to the Amazon and pick up a load of uh, prices and components, best matching your criteria. So if you select an Intel motherboard uh, processor, it should match Intel board. So it's going to do its job and come back with a list of components. And we'll have a look if it's uh, best suiting our criteria. Okay, let's. Uh, it might take a while. Um, Is this one of those? Um, I played around with this a little bit offline. Of yeah, course. It, and, it, uh, it it needs a it needs updates now and again, and uh, of course it's still beta stage. And so we're looking at uh, more input feedback and see how to improve this. Uh, it looks like it's kind of hanging at the moment. But uh, what will happen usually is it'll come up with a list of components. So the processors first, uh, then you choose your motherboard, then the uh, graphics card, memory, uh, SSD, power supply, and so on. Um, so yeah, I'll need to get my brother Yao, who's the architect behind this, to get this fixed. But uh, yeah, it's, it's usually uh, quite a good tool because then once you select, uh, got the list, you buy, okay, I want to buy. So you can click on the buy button. It'll take you to the Amazon cart and then you can actually continue to buy. Uh, but it gives you an idea what components that you need to build up a system and you can check out the prices and different brands and stuff like that. Yeah, so I think this needs updating. I'll, I'll get my brother to, uh, to work on that. But yeah, so that's Rig Builder. Um, you can check out our, our other streams showing the rig builder. We've done that on the other streams. See how that works. Um, moving on, let's have a look. We got. Uh, oh yes, yes. It's time for. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's time for mods of the week. Yes, yeah, time for the mods of the week and um, mods of the week. We have. Before we do that, let's have a look at the chat. See who's online. We got uh, Darren. How's it going? We got Stephanie Birch. Yes, how is it going? Good. Uh, Edwin. Uh, so Edwin and also Alvin was uh, earlier. We had some is- audio issues, but that that was fixed. That was just me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, all good. Everyone's online. Okay, cool. Let's do mods of the week, shall we? Let's hit the button right now. Mods of the week. Okay, Dennis, what do you think of this one? This is RGB. It's totally RGB. I like that little dash down at the bottom. Yeah, this is a thermal take build, I think. It has a uh, distro plates. Uh, okay, move on to this one first. This is a kind of a semi, kind of, um, how can I put it? it a Tony Stark Iron... kind of build. Yeah, it's an Iron Man build. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I like it when they uh, adjust the, the bezel. You know, so we have that little detail on the side of the bezel, and I'm sure that's a stock bezel that they just went and cut the rest of it out. Yeah, yeah. Even key fitting glass. Um, it's very creative. Got the red coolant. Uh, it's got Gigabyte RTX card in there. Looks like G Skill RAM. Mm-hmm. Looks, uh, it looks a nice build. Um, nothing spectacular. I'm gonna give this a seven. What do you think? Um, a f- yeah, a seven is good. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of um, different, but clean. Yeah, well, and personally, I like clean builds, but I yeah. also like a build that is very functional because I've put some together that are, you know, they look like art pieces, but then they're extremely fragile. And once oh, you move them yeah, around, yeah, 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 because it's, uh, yeah. Oh, look at this one. This one is, I believe, is the thermal take case. It's the full, mm-hmm. full-size ETX with the uh, helicopter style kind of, you know. <laughs> 
but yeah, he, I think he's got the um, he's got the black theme going on there. Very nice, clean. If you notice the the thermal take block, water block, and the ram is kind of like and the tubing is away from the ram, so you can actually take the ram out. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah some some builds where you could just cover the whole uh ram when that's you're stuck with that right but with this well and and the one thing that while you still can remove the ram i think it was done primarily so you could see the rgb lights through oh, the ram. yeah 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 of course so he's got the disc replace in there very nice uh disc replace is a big thing this year or earlier from last year as well but uh yeah people are starting to build those in fact people manufacturers start to integrate those uh disc replace into their cases as well so it looks really nice. This one, um, didn't do a lot of modding on this one. I'm gonna give it a seven point five because it's it's got a it's got a nice, you know, theme. Cable tidy could have been a, bit, a little bit better, but it's yeah. still good though. Well, <laughs> from from a build standpoint, I would say it's a seven. But from if we're looking at it from an actual mod standpoint, there isn't very many mods, so it might yeah. be kind of a five. I mean, it is really super clean, that nice color scheme, but um, yeah, you know. It depends oh. on on the way you look at it. What about this one? This one's kind of um, I, I'm not sure if it's a, a, a case they modded the case with this with, because the case looks what those what those um, yellow kind of uh, etches on those on the case is that purpose done on purpose? You know. Yeah, the... that's um, so. What they did is they have a base of gold and then they put a light color or a light coating of black. Kind of a matte black on top and then you take some sandpaper and you scuff it and make it it makes it look distressed is the idea behind that so uh, it looks, so it looks like same with the water blocks they did the same thing with the block water block mm -hmm. yeah. um so this one's using the phantom uh gaming veloster this is the b550 that actually they used so it's still mm -hmm. a very good board in fact we got one of those right here as well um yeah like you got that design there so it's a little bit of modding there with the pink work um mm -hmm. Soft tubing, it'll, it'll look good on some cases. Uh, this one looks okay. Um, I'm going to give this uh, a 7.5 for this one. <laughs> um, I'm going to go 7 again. Mm. Um, you don't see very many cases or builds, I should say, with soft tubing. And um, part of it is because, you know, you get a lot of peer pressure to say, well, if you're going to be putting that much effort in, you need to do hard line. Well, yeah. Soft tubing gets you up and running, and it actually, in some cases, performs better. Oh, look at this one. This is the Captain America theme. Yeah. This is nice. I like the paint job on it. It looks clean. It looks really nice. It's got that uh, the old style Captain America, uh, you know. Yeah, paint. the classic. The classic, yeah. It's got the yeah, red, a, blue, white um, cable. Old... So, yeah, very nice. There's the power cables, yeah. Yeah, uh, and it's a, a old Cooler Master case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it has the uh, the paint job for the graphics card cover as well. Um, okay. All-in-one cooler is good enough. Um, some of these all-in-one coolers are just as good. In fact, I'm using, in fact, all my builds are using um, all-in-one coolers. There's only certain big projects I use hardline, and that's uh, a big project because it takes time to build. Uh, but all-in-one's just as good. Um, yeah, I like this one. I'm going to give this an eight. Yeah. Um, I would agree. Eight. Yeah. This one, yeah, I like um, the, the artwork. This one, a fan cooler. Yes, this guy's using fan cooling. <laughs> All right, don't discount it yet because fan cooling is just as good. Uh, it's a shame that they don't have any nice uh, fan cooling. It's just using the standard stock AMD cooler right there, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine yeah, you had a nice. Um, he's done some paint work on that AMD cooler though. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so. This one is um, got a purple theme going on with the GTX. This one's a yeah, like build. They, um, they took the cooler apart to paint it. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna give this a, a six point five because it's just plain, really, apart from the paint job. Um, I would have to go with a five. Although I do like the the detail they put on the basement panel there. Makes it right. Look, look at this one. This one is. Um, have you seen this case before? It's like a pyramid with the glass panels on this one yeah that's um that's an antec design i believe yeah right or is that an in, in win i forget the the this one i like i like um because it's you you see everything all 360 degrees right 
and the board is at the bottom but you have to put the cooler kind of like on top and the bottom and stuff like that so so uh i would give it i'm gonna give it 7.5 all right we'll go back onto this uh cooler uh sorry this build here with the rgb so we'll take mm -hmm. very nice this plate got a nice big cooler at the top with the radiator hardline yeah, tubes it's got three distro plates in there it yeah looks like. yeah three yeah yeah and the one at the back as well um for this one because of all the component side and everything i'm gonna give this a good eight i would <laughs> yeah. agree got good good color rendering too uh yeah very nice so you got the mods of the week and these are all taken from the extreme pc modding group so if guys if you want to join that group uh it's on facebook uh group so you could check it out extreme pc modding we have over 50,000 members. So thanks, guys, for joining. And, of course, uh, visit that uh, page for more modding tips and uh, any mods that you want to post on that, on that page. All right. So we have Black Suit 666. We got Outsider. We got Darren, uh, Arvin. Yeah, all good. Coming in, joining our show. Thanks, guys, for joining. So, um, Dennis, any modding tips? Any uh, advice on uh, some of the builds that people want to get into? Any uh, anything to look out for? Any any you know? Um, actually, the the thing with modding is that people think that there's this huge barrier of entry to actually get into doing modding, and and really, it's anytime you make a change to improve your computer, improve your system, improve the case, that's a mod. So, you know, just adding extra fans or, or improving the cooling to the point where instead of having, uh, you know, there was a case in here where it was the Cooler Master one where he put a fan in the back as an exhaust, but then he didn't block off the rest of the venting. So what happens is the air goes out the fan and then immediately in right below it. So you don't actually get any air movement. So a mod that it's really inexpensive and works amazingly well is to block off all of those vent holes. So, so you have airflow coming in from the front. And then the whole idea is that uh, when airflow goes from the front, you want to exhaust out the back, right? Kind of, yeah, you want to actually have it move through the case. Yeah. And if you get what I call short circuits, where a fan will be blowing out, but then there's a vent right below it, it's equalizing the pressure. So the air is just coming back in. It's not actually leaving the case. Right, right. So one of the one of the inexpensive mods is to judge how many fans you have and make sure that the air is moving from one side of the case to the other. Uh, but that that's my my little tip. Arv, Arvin says anything you add from the stock is considered a mod indeed. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Outsider says exactly. Very good. Okay. Cool. Hey guys, I've bought myself one of these chicken. Yes, one of these. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's funny because um, I wanted to um, you know, yeah. This one is only three dollars. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. I like it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's a nice it's, little horn. It's a little horn. Yeah. So give a shout out to the people up there. All right. Okay. So uh, we're gonna have a, a um a break, and we'll be back after a couple of minutes. So enjoy the video, and uh, we'll see you in a bit.
Hey and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that video. That was uh, the uh, kind of uh, our intro ad, I guess. Uh, I won't say an intro ad. It's more of a kind of a, a compilation of all the videos that we've done, and also what we do uh, in our labs and like modding and events and that kind of kind of stuff like that. So yeah, okay. So let's bring up um, Dennis back in, and uh, we're going to be talking about um, the GeForce RTX. So. This is basically, uh, of course, that was launched a couple of months ago. The RTX, we had lots of uh, issues with um, scalpers and all sorts of th stuff like that. It's not, it's not fun. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, trying to get hold of a card, uh, forget it. I mean, it was, it was a bit of a nightmare, you know. And um, and and it's it's, it's something that uh, Dennis and I experienced a lot. You know, trying to get hold of a graphics card just to to you know test do some modding or, or reviewing it, it, you can't get it but um but the rumors of uh, having a geforce rtx uh, 3080 ti uh has been floating around um what's your thoughts on that dennis ah yeah they say save it for the best <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Is that because they wanted to um, put a AMD on its tracks and like, hey, hold on, we need to re release something before uh, you know the the 6800 gets a, a foothold of the market? Because you gotta think when people uh, re uh, you know think about the graphics card, they go, yeah, the 3080 and the 3070. That's really targeted at the high end gamers. And the prices are so much as well. I mean, looking at well over six, seven hundred dollars for those graphics cards, and don't forget uh, th that's targeted at the high-end kind of gaming. And then you have um, uh, AMD releasing their sixty-eight hundreds uh, XTs, and then uh, the big one as well, the sixty-nine hundred XTs. But then the sixty-nine hundred were more high-end. The sixty-eight hundred XT were more um, kind of mid-range, kind of mid to high-end kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that market there is kind of uh, up for grabs, and then and a a AMD have gone targeted that that bracket because uh, people who can afford between four to six hundred dollars, and that's a good range for a graphics card. If I if I want to buy one a graphics card for gaming, I'm going to target that price range between four hundred and six hundred. There's no way I'm going to spend a thousand dollars, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars for a for a GeForce thirty eighty. But well, I don't need it for that price. So so this is where uh, Nvidia. So hey, hold on. We're missing a a, a market brand that we need to uh, target, and this is where I think they push up the thirty sixty Ti, right? Oh. Oh, wait one second, Dennis. We have an issue with the uh, audio. Uh oh. Here we go. All right, Dennis. Hey, am I back? Yeah, you're back. I'm back. That's me. You keep muting me. What's up with that? Oh, man, I don't know. I got this <laughs> OBS <laughs> no, screen thought... going on. Okay, so we're yeah. talking about the uh, uh, RTX 3080 and mm -hmm. um, 3080 Ti. And uh, I mentioned about the, the, the targeted uh, uh, market that they were going to go for the 3060, right? So you mentioned yeah. the 3060 well, earlier. And, well, um, yeah, we had talked about the, the 3080 and if the, the 3080 tie was actually going to be a thing. And uh, my response was, yeah, I mean, NVIDIA has always done a tie or they've done just recently a super. And that indicates the second generation of their particular card. So we'll have something that is in between the standard 3080 and the 3090. Um, and a point that I was going to bring up with the 3080 tie, if it does happen, I think that is really going to be the new 
enthusiast card because people are right now they can't really afford the fifteen two thousand dollars for the thirty ninety, but they want to have performance close to that. So that's where that thirty eighty tie is going to be, and yeah. that's going to be the the overclocker card. But uh, but we had oh go ahead. But they they mentioned um, the thirty ninety thirty ninety was more of a, you remember those had the the, the titans right they had the. Mm-hmm. Uh, Back end, they had the GTX, the Titans, and then they had the Titan V and the Titan X and stuff like that. So, so, so to be honest with you, the 3090 was more of a Titan card, right? Is that right? Right, it was. Uh, it, the 3090 is basically the Titan edition. And by the Titan edition, that means that we have the fully realized GPU. This is all the cores are unlocked, all the features are unlocked. This is what this chip can do from the factory. And everything else from there is just cut down. So we remove some cores, we remove a memory controller channel we you know and the idea is that you have the same silicon and as certain parts of that chip fail in quality testing we're going to create other gpus from that yeah um, aps which says jensen is muted too i know um we don't want to listen to jensen speaking you want to <laughs> listen to us speaking <laughs> no, that's just a video in the background to show you yeah. showcase uh, some of the geforce um uh, launches from last mo- a couple of months ago all right, so yeah, um, uh, so we, 3080, we yeah, carry on. 3060, right? 3060, yeah. So got 3060, uh, that was launched uh, yeah, last week. And mm-hmm. um, lots of um, kind of feedback, we got good feedback from it. The performance is as good as a 2080, is that right? Uh, they claim it's a little faster than a 2080 Super, but it, as the as marketing has told us, we have to look between the lines. So we have... Yes, it will be the 2080 Super in some benchmarks, in some games, but in others, it's not necessarily, it's kind of on par. So if you get the 3060 tie, it's just like buying the 2080 Super, which was three times the cost. And now, of course, you can't buy them. So mm. so, so 3060 is good, good price uh, for what it's worth. And I think uh, a lot of people go for that, actually, because uh, 3070 is still a little bit expensive. And if you, if you look at the performance between the 3070 and the 3060 Ti for the price, I'm going to go for the 3060 yeah, Ti. Oh, yeah. So. And as we were talking, as I was muted, um, you know, the the card is being released to combat an AMD release of some level, right? Yeah, yeah. Because we have the, the mid, well, the budget gamer is going to be looking for the low end on the market, the best gaming card they can buy if they're in the market. For about, as you mentioned, four to six hundred dollars, the the competition there is pretty fierce, and we have multiple vendors that are creating different editions of that card, and either hot clocking them or putting different coolers on them to improve performance. Yeah. And the idea is that they are just going to be buying the whatever the the best bang for their buck is. Mm. So, so with the uh, thirty sixty, uh, do you th- do you think they're going to have a thirty fifty as well? Is that something that uh... They're going to be well, looking into. Uh, you know, the I would say yes, just because they've always had a thirty fifty, but um, you know they didn't really in the twenty series. And yeah. um, it, generally speaking, the fifty series edition in the Nvidia range has always been more of like an office card. You know, mm. it's not really a gaming card. People can buy it to game on, but. Um, you're really limited in screen resolution. So it's like, yeah, you could get a 50 series and you might run it at 10, 1080p with some of the details turned down. But, you know, at that point, it's like, well, what if about I the... could do that, I could, you know, there's other things you can do to increase performance, but it's not really an ideal yeah. gaming card. So so with the uh, specs of the uh, 3080 Ti, have you got any information on the specs on the 30? No? I heard no, it's going to be 20 I... gig. Well, it... Obviously, it's going to be a little bit less than 3090, um, you know, the in terms of spec. Uh, but I really don't know much about it. And obviously, it's unreleased, so it's really hard to speculate on that. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so give me a rating on the 3060 Ti. I think is that is that something that you would go for, or is that something that you would recommend people to go for? The 3060 um, Ti. You know, as I kind of talked before, I'm a bit of a an enthusiast, so I always look at the higher end cards. Mm. Um, 3060 is obviously on the table though, because you know the 2080 Super, that's a, a monster card in terms of gaming performance. And if you are uh, 1080p or 2K gaming, it works great. You can turn all the details up and if you have a good um, stable 
subsystem, a good processor and motherboard combo, mm -hmm. it, it will give you excellent performance in, for several years. So that's, uh, if the price if the price is right and you can buy one because that is the other issue you oh, might not be able God, to buy yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So so scalpers have been, you know, oh, they're, they're a bit of a nightmare. So is yeah, that is that is that they're doing the same thing for the 3060 Ti? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. I know that in um, EVGA, for instance, has this queue system when mm -hmm. you go to buy a car. So you go and you basically you, you line up virtually. So you put your name on a list and as product comes into the shop, they send out an email saying, all right, you can come in and buy it in your code and then you can actually make the purchase. And th that is how they're getting around scalpers going to the EVGA but, store and buying yeah, cars. But isn't it um, they take uh, do like one per customer? And wasn't that always the case? Or is that something that they bypass that now? One well, per that was uh, the the limit has always been an EVGA thing on their store. Um, and Newegg has it as well, the other retailer here in the U.S. So the, while that limit is there, the, the issue was we have these... Um, scalpers or the robo buyers they have hundreds and hundreds of accounts oh. that they just go and they can buy four at a time and they're just you know they program it into the bot and it goes and walks through makes the purchase and then buys up the entire stock but then so but then when you buy the stock don't they have to like input their credit cards in i mean where is that fake credit cards or how 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 is it done i mean <laughs> no they're, have they're like... real, they're real credit cards and yeah, that's but they're credit cards but then you also need a shipping address matching your credit card where mm -hmm. your billing address is, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> how, well, how is that? That was where um, NVIDIA had caught a bunch of these scalpers because they were using the same credit card. So it was just that there was a different name, but it was the same credit card, same shipping it's, address. So. It's simple. I mean, all they need to do is one per customer, one per address to matching that credit card to that billing address. And that's it. You're not going to have five different credit cards registered the same address. I mean, that's unless you're using your dad's, your sister's, your mom's, whatever. But then if it's shipping to one address, that's it. That's yeah. you're not going to you're not going to get a, a, that's basically problem solved. Ship one card to one address based on your billing card, uh, address on your credit card. And that's it. And this. Yeah. You, well, you... and that's that's the way that it should be. But, you know, with the way that the, the U.S. e-tailers work, you know, they don't want to limit you know, because it's like you have a family of five and two people in the house want to buy cards. Well, they go and try to buy them. Well, no, you already have one shipping to your house, so you can't get another one. And then that person is being left out. So it's a balance, obviously. Um, mm, and, I guess. you know, EVJ has kind of gotten around it with their queue system. And others are just kind of looking at the way that the credit cards are being used. But, you know, with the way that... Uh, technology is you can just program that into your robot to go and do something slightly different and you know, one of the other things that they were doing were shipping to po boxes oh so, man and <laughs> that was easy to say well we're not going to ship to a po box and yeah. you know you shouldn't anyway i mean you should actually ship to a physical address that matches a credit card to prevent fraud and whatnot. yeah so, yeah yeah cool so, yeah i mean that the the whole um purchase market and the demand for the 30 series it's been a problem ever since you know mining right because we had the 10 series that was yeah. in short supply yeah. and then well, 20 series was just expensive and i think that was i in my podcast we had joked about how the 20 series was um not fully baked you know there was more to be had in the rtx but they needed to get something released so they released it at a really high price because people were paying that for the 10 series. So why not just take those prices and add them to the 20 series and see what happens? Ah, well, actually I heard that they're using the, the new graphics cards for mining now. I mean, is that something mm -hmm. that's still happening? I mean, you know. Well, and it's, um, you know, it's based off of the price of Bitcoins and all of the altcoins, right? So as those things increase to make it worth their while, then yeah. We'll go and invest to buy 10 cards if we can and then put them in the system and within a month we'll be able to get our money back. That's that's their economic idea, right? Um, and with that sort of <laughs> money behind it, it's going to be a problem forever until well, you know, was the, uh, the 20 series, they claimed that the way that the core counts were, they were low enough that the cars didn't get used for mining. Well, now with the 30 series, we have so many cores and so many different threads that 
it makes it worthwhile again. Mm, yeah, especially with my, uh, Bitcoin up the nineteen thousand dollar range, right? Possibly hitting the twenty thousand early next year. Cool, mad, mad. All right, yeah. so <laughs> yes, it's the oh, no. the chicken. Yeah, we're gonna do the uh, prize giveaways. Yes, let's have a look at the website and have a look at what's available on the prize giveaways. Let's switch over to the website and um, here we have prize giveaways yes look at that all right so this is on our website for kick it and uh, we have a couple of prize giveaways thanks to our sponsors uh, thermal take this is interesting this is the thermal take AHT 200 and this is the uh, micro ATX version of the case so we uh, in the mods of the week we saw a large version this is the smaller version and if it's the micro ATX motherboard and it's available right now uh, on our website for a prize giveaway check it out all you need to do is go to the website click on a link and then um, follow the steps to enter the prize giveaway and we have 20 days left and this is the closing dates on the 26th of December and that's Boxing Day yeah so it gives you plenty of time to enjoy your Christmas and then Boxing Day uh, we'll be announcing the the winners on this so we've got this uh, available right now on our prize giveaway thanks to Thermaltake and then we also have um, this one. This is the uh, uh, Fatality. Yes, the ASRock Fatality B450 Gaming K4 motherboard. Um, yes, it's only a B450 AMD, but um, uh, it's apparently you can update the BIOS and then it'll take up the uh, 5000 series processors. But you gotta be careful. Look at the uh, check out the website on their BIOS as well. Make sure you're uh, able to use a 5000 series chip. But yeah available to um, grab from our website check it out again follow the steps uh, closing day oh you get this as well the Tai Chi mat yes it's Tai Chi a mouse mat this very nice big wide one we've given those ways before uh, so you get the motherboard and the Tai Chi mat and it's available we've got 14 days left two weeks this is the closing day on the 20th of December so again follow the steps watch the videos uh, give us a like share and so on so yeah so this is available right now on our website and finally we have this one this is another thermal take case to give away uh this is the um, v250 um motherboard sync argb atx mid tower so uh, very nice chassis it's uh, a full tower oh sorry mid tower but it's a full size atx motherboard you can actually fit in there it comes with all the nice rgb fans as well same thing again check out the website click on the links and then um follow the steps and then you'll be able to uh, be a for a chance to win one of these. 20 days. Again, Boxing Day, closing date. So check it out. So those are the three uh, giveaways that we have uh, on Funky Kit. Uh, on AMD 3D, we have um, the same motherboard, actually, because uh, ASRock gave us two motherboards. So we decided to put this one on AMD 3D. And this one, yeah, the same one. So same thing, same motherboard. But it's on a on the AMD 3D website. So with those are prize giveaways to give away, right? So those are the prize giveaways, and I think it's time to do a live prize giveaway. Do you think? Sure. I, 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 um, <laughs> this week's I'll let you do that. Live prize giveaway. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do a live prize giveaway, and it's awesome. awesome. Yes, it's awesome. You like that? That's actually yeah. me doing the uh, voice. Uh, let's grab something off the uh, the cabinet, shall we? What, what, do we? what do we have here? Oh, look. Look at that. We're going to give one of these away. Did you brush, brush the dust off? I, I did. It's been, <laughs> <laughs> it's been on the shelf for a while. Actually, no. It's just... Um, yeah. you know, I'm going to give it a good rub. Right, it's one yeah. of these. It's called a storage backupper. Right, and this is basically a external enclosure that you can actually fit a two and a half inch uh, SSD in there, and um, or two and a half inch hard drive, and it has a USB three connection, and also a USB C Type A and Type C, and uh, funny enough is you can actually download the software from the App Store, whether it's Android or uh, Google uh, Apps. Yeah, Google Android Play Store or uh, Apple App Store and uh, you can actually use the phone to back up all your photos straight into this device 
Oh, hard drive not included, sorry. <laughs> you got to fix your own hard drive in there. But yeah, this one uh, available right now. I want to give one of these away. Yes, it's... Okay, let me cover the hard drive. So it's just one of these, okay? It's the enclosure. But don't think... The enclosure is about $30, actually, because it has a unique way of um, basically backing up your phone's um, information, whether it's photos, documents, and so on. It's just one USB cable from the USB-C or A, that connects up to your phone and then use the app on the phone to transfer data straight into your uh, hard drive once you put one in. So not bad because you know when people plug in the phone into the cable of your uh, computer or laptop and you got to select the drive and you got you know an Apple is a pain in the ass with the um, the phone you want to back up their photos. So with this it's well. basically use the app transfer bang straight onto your hard drive and you can take the hard drive out pull it into your computer or your laptop and your files are all there and you can use it as a standard external device as well so not bad so we'll give one of these away okay so that's uh the storage backup from oracle i think we have a review on this actually let me check it out yeah we do cool. yeah and also a video let me uh let me bring it up i think we have it here uh reviews uh this one uh, it's called Oracle. 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 Oracle review? Yeah. <laughs> and it's here, loading. Did I press return? Here you go. Yes, it's the Oracle backup. Uh, easy way to back up your phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a video. Yeah, go check it out. Yeah. Um, I like the name. Back upper. Back upper. I had, I had to read it twice. It's called... <laughs> That's a back a backup. <laughs> yeah, the backup. <laughs> backup. Yeah. All right. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, so for this, um, Dennis, what do you think, you guys or viewers, should type in in the chat to win this? What do you think? Um, the name of my first review site. Oh yes, yes. So Dennis has a, a, a an original, uh, very first review site. And he named it something something dot com. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, of course now the new name is Asylum, uh, uh, HardwareAsylum dot com. So yep. what was the original name? Okay, of his original first website. Um, yeah, type that in right now in the chat. So if you guys been watching the stream, you should uh, know the name. Okay, um, any clues, Dennis? You want to give them? Um, clues, clues. Um... Um, it's named after a Kawasaki motorcycle. Yeah. And it is another name for a road. Hmm. Okay. So type that in right now in the chat. It's, uh, how can I, here we go. Let me see if I can, um, bring up a screenshot or something. Maybe, uh, let me, uh, okay. I know some people have been paying attention, right? Let's hope so. Yeah. I don't remember. I had that for dinner. <laughs> what I had for dinner? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's see. Um, if you oh. do a Google search for... Well, let's see. I'm going to do a search. Da, da, da. Oh. Um, well, I guess we could... Uh, we could do a, um, a very blatant hint. So we got the Kawasaki. Actually, ZX you have um, you have in your Facebook page. Let me just oh, yeah. bring up your Facebook page, right? Uh, let me. Should be on my Facebook page. Well, some stuff. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so in here, you've actually mentioned something. Let me see. Let me see if I can get it out here. You do. No, that's this is still. Oh, um, here. I think I I know how to do this. Go here. there and then we 
do oh my gosh <laughs> here we go i got i got a little inf information here so does the chat allow you to do some screenshots or is it gonna have to flip it over here you, i sent you a link you can just post that picture okay this picture okay let me grab yeah. that picture um let me see if i can get that sorry sorry let me just get a link <laughs> it's okay it, it, it's the the super i'm not going to tell you what it is but you can just read it all right okay got it oh okay cool i got it i got it this would be a better hey. one let me just bring up the um uh the facebook page of the old site right oh uh, yeah it hasn't cool. got it hasn't you just kind of look at it okay so i'm gonna get i'm gonna give it like five seconds for you guys to look at it and you just have to tell me the name of dennis's first website okay <laughs> all right so it's gonna be flashing on for five seconds i'm gonna count to five and if you're gonna read it quickly and it's gonna go off in five ready uh here we go i'm gonna do this right now with the thing here we go five four three two one all right so i hope you guys uh, noticed that that was like a good clue you got five seconds and you have to type in that website yes dennis's first website in the chat right now and you'll be able to win this is the oracle backup excluding hard drive okay <laughs> that's hard my drive, not <laughs> some assembly required <laughs> all right the, the entries are coming in yes yes yeah. oh mind you the is that website still live or is is it just all redirected it to is. the uh, hardware it asylum? is so yeah if you go to ninjalane.com you'll see the reviews that, and articles that i posted before i switched over to hardware asylum mm -hmm. and uh, some of the other writers uh, their articles are on there as well some of the other editors i had doing reviews all right cool so yeah you could uh yeah it's it's, it's like my older site i i, I think i still have that um, but i re redirected most of my uh, uh, mm -hmm. links to to the new site because we back then we had um we had of course amd 3d and that's kind of it went online early days 2000 went offline and we kept that name and then relaunched it this uh, this year in 2020 uh, before that then because we moved then to cpu 3d and then from cpu yeah. 3 to funky kit and the funky kit has been like mm, for the last like 10 years 10 more than 10, <laughs> more, more than 10 years yeah. all right I so okay let's have a look at the uh, the chat all the entries coming in yes the that is it the, the name of the website is right there um you guys are actually getting the correct answers all good okay so dennis you can actually see my screen right i can all right so yeah um so i'm gonna move my up mouse up and down wherever the mouse lands is the winner is that good i'm gonna oh, sure. like random you know scroll up and down so uh i'm gonna come to five ready oh you go five. yeah <laughs> okay, we have a winner. It's uh, do you see that mouse? It's called Ooh, Stephanie. Stephanie, you are the winner. Stephanie. All right, let me tap that in. Stephanie. Stephanie. S T with an I, no E. <laughs> I like oh, the winner. Funny. You are the winner. Stephanie, you are the winner of the um, Oracle Storage Backup. Uh, yes. Let me show that to you. Yes. And I'll give you a clap because you deserve one. And also, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and a little bit of a chicken cry. Here you go. All right. Okay. So, Oracle Storage Backup. Uh, Stephanie, you're the winner. So, thanks. All you need to do is send me your shipping address, your name, of course, your telephone number to media at funkykit.com. So uh, let me type that in, media at funkykit.com. And this is where you send your shipping address details to me. Don't forget your name, shipping address, and telephone number. And I uh, will be shipping out that to you sometime this week. So well done, Stephanie. Well done. Congrats. And um, so, Dennis, before we go, any last words, any advice, any uh, up-and-coming projects, uh, what you uh, plans for next year? What you have? Uh, let's see. Um you know, I'm going to tell everybody out there to, you know, 
stay safe and be nice to everyone. Yep. For next year, I have some plans to do a YouTube series that will highlight some old hardware that I have been collecting in my permanent collection. So, you know, as I mentioned before, I've been doing hardware reviews for a really long time, and I actually still have some of the very first motherboards I ever reviewed. You know, these are like wow. Pentium 3, AMD, does Apple this still, Does it still stuff. work? Yeah, they still work. Wow. So um, I even have a, a Pentium Pro machine that somebody gifted me one day. So I was going to do kind of like a, a small little YouTube series highlighting all of those old products and, you know, talking about the the situation in the world when that product was released, um, you know, the overclockability of it, the reason that it's in the permanent collection. And in some cases, I might even just fire it up. I mean, I have several like Pentium 4 motherboards. I may mean, only do one where I fire it up, but, uh, you know, each one of the products that I have has a story and that's what I want to tell people. Yeah, yeah, it's a good way to kind of like you've showcased timeline of all the computers that you've had in the past from, um, you know, the old Pentiums, even the, remember the, the AMD K6 processors and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yep. uh, even have, um... earlier from, from that, earlier than that would be the 486s and the 386s. Remember those? <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. Those. And then you could do like a little mini series. That'd be good. Uh, yeah. Showing case of, you know, how much it costs back then, what it could do. Back then, oh, it, yeah. it didn't do a lot apart from just word processing. And and uh, what's that game they used to play a lot of? Larry something. Larry. <laughs> Laser Suit Larry? Yeah, yeah. Laser Suit Larry. <laughs> Remember them? <laughs> Jeez. Yep. Laser Suit Larry. Yeah. yeah. And, that um, was a, a fun game when it first came out. And then they released some other editions that were not. Yeah. And then you can talk hard, about but... some of the stuff like uh, uh, from there, the old graphics, because they have the old VGA cards. And then. The VGA cards were not designed for gaming, and then they had those Voodoo cards. Remember those Voodoo cards, mm -hmm. 3DFX, and that yep. really changed the way people game on PC. That was the first kind of like big boost, uh, and it kind of elevated PC gaming to a level where okay, people are shifting away from that because uh, consoles at the time was big, you know, yeah. people just using consoles to play games, and that's fine, but they didn't have the interconnectivity with obviously online and internet and stuff like that and also consoles were just consoles you couldn't do anything else with the platform playing games so the pc though you can go on the internet you can do word processing you can game you can do like lots of other things not but not just gaming you know apart from gaming as well so it was a it was an overall tool for everything to do with you know you can do a little bit of hacking if you wanted <laughs> well, yeah, well, well, during that time was also the rise of the LAN party. And that was a oh, way for yeah. people to get together and play games. And, you know, we had cyber cafes that were, if you didn't have a PC, you could go to the cyber cafe and play games with your friends and uh, send emails and surf the web and stuff like that. So, you know, there's a lot of history in the way that the way that we use computers now is a result of all of those early efforts. Mm, definitely, some yeah. of the some of the stuff has really been migrated. You know, we've gone past it and other parts of it are very solid and they work exactly the same way as they did 15, 20 years ago. Mm. Yeah. So, so Dennis, talk us uh, about your plans for the, the future for next year. Um, CES, any, any plans there in Computex? Or when well, when the, will we see you again? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm hoping that I'll be around for Computex, uh, assuming that the um, the world kind of gets their act together and we can start traveling around again. Uh, CES obviously has gone to a virtual show. Yeah. And as a hardware media, we make the excuse to go to Vegas to visit CES and see it. But a lot of it is just kind of spent running around to the different hotel rooms to meet with our hardware vendors because mm. while they are taking advantage of CES, what they have to show is not necessarily CES worthy. So, you know, I'll spend a day on the show floor to go and check out the latest thing. It's, you know, the <laughs> in the drone corner and, you know, checking out some of the latest TVs and whatnot. But mm. if I want to talk to EVJ, I need to go to where EVJ is staying. If I need to talk to Cooler Master, I need to go yeah. where Cooler Master is. So, so um, CCS unfortunately, virtual? since, yeah, since that's not going to happen, then I'll probably just kind of watch the videos online. But Computex, I'm hoping to go to Taiwan again in 2021. Yeah, so I'll probably see you there too. Fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah. 
uh, <laughs> that was yeah, it goes. Yeah, so Dennis and I've uh, known each other for a few years now, and um, you know, of course, we're kind of veterans in this kind of tech game. Yeah, we've been doing this review stuff way, way back, and uh, yeah, it's all good to see everybody, the community, get together and everything. It's a good place to have uh, chats and stuff like that. So yeah, it's all good. So Dennis, hope you, hope you enjoyed the stream. And of course, yeah. uh, we'll have you again uh, next time. Just you know, just give me a ping, and of course, uh, we'll set up a, another stream. Uh, any catch, any updates on your projects and things like that. It's all good to have you on board. Of course, we have every week we have different guests. Uh, this week we had Dennis, and then um, of course next week we have. I think we have, uh, um, yeah, Dwayne. You know Dwayne? Oh, yeah, we Dwayne. Dwayne. Yeah, Modern Zinc. Modern Zinc. Yes, we're gonna have Dwayne from Modern Zinc next week. So uh, stay tuned to make sure you don't, don't miss that show as well. So thanks, Dennis, for joining our show. And of course, we will have you again uh, when you have any updates for us as well. So cool. Stay safe. Enjoy your weekend or week, and uh, we'll see you next time, next week in our show. Until then, All right. bye. Take care.